Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am usually a nail art channel and uh, we've gone to the dogs today, which most of you know, I go to the dogs almost every day. Um, but today I'm gonna show you how to make dog food. Um, my English Mastiff, Penny, has issues with food allergies. So we took her to the vet. She had hives really bad on her sides. Um, we took her to the vet. They assumed it was a food allergy. We had switched her. We didn't switch brands, but we had switched her from a puppy food to the adult version of um, Blue Buffalo. We've also tried Ollie, which is a subscription of um, homemade dog food. And it is a really high quality, really good brand of dog food, but it was so expensive. We could not afford to keep that up. So I decided to make my own food. So after um, Googling a bunch of uh, different websites to see what exactly I needed to put in her food and educate myself on um, a raw diet versus a raw cooked diet, a raw diet is too hard for me to maintain. Um, so I decided to cook. So I use a giant 22 quart pot and I cook her food. Um, it is very important to make sure that you don't use things that your dog is going to be sick from. Onions, um, don't give them grapes or raisins. Um, skin, seeds from apples, skin from potatoes. Potatoes period, unless they're sweet potatoes. Mm. Are questionable I do give them some um, it's also very important to make sure they have enough calcium when you're doing this so I um, grind up duck and chicken egg shells really fine and um, powder them and put them in food or I crush up the bones from um, salmon patties so if you ever opened a can of salmon you know that that has um, a bunch of bones in it they are extremely high in calcium those are also great to crunch up and put in the food so um, as far as weight goes my dog weighs she weighs 125 pounds so you take 40% of their weight which hers would be 40% um, of 125 math clicking um, roughly 53 pounds um, so I would turn that into ounces so 52 53 ounces would be a little over five cups of food a day and normally what I do is I give them scrambled duck eggs in the morning with a couple of cups of her regular dry food and a friend of mine makes um, has ducks. He doesn't make the ducks. He has ducks and he sells me duck eggs. And they are higher in protein and fatty acids. You can also put coconut oil and other oils that are good for them, heart healthy oils, in the food. I'll put a total of the cost um, that I have with this size of pot. This is a giant, I don't even know what it is. I'll put the temperature at like what it says for defrost, 300 degrees, 75. In there, I'm going to be cutting up a butternut squash, chickpeas, you can also use the dried, a couple of cans of green beans, a package of split peas, Old-fashioned oats. I also usually use barley, and I do not have any ripe this minute, and I usually, um, that was something I was supposed to get at the store and I forgot. I also add wild rice, um, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes. Um, I boiled a chicken that I got extremely cheap last night. So into the pan back here, I'm getting ready to debone it. Um, I add one giant value size 48 ounce of chicken stock. The same size of um, beef broth. You have these sweet potato fries that I didn't cook that 
are getting a little mushy, so I'm going to throw these in here. Um, carrots were super cheap because um, after the holidays, uh, they got to get rid of them. And I also got some broccoli for like 50 cents that is also, you know, was going to go bad. Chicken livers, which were super cheap, like a dollar twenty-eight for um, a 20 ounce container. Two dollars for um, almost one and a half pounds of gizzards and hearts and a three pound package of ground beef. Um, the chicken I bought was extremely cheap. I think it was on sale for $2 um, and just a whole chicken and I boiled it and I'm going to debone that. I'm going to put all this in this pot and let it cook all day. Um, I did buy very high grade dog food um, for a large, specifically for a large breed. So we did end up going back to her puppy food that did not give her allergies. It is um, Diamond Natural from, we get it, Rule King. Blue Diamond was actually, or Blue Buffalo was actually what she started having allergic reactions to. That's when the hive started when we moved her to an adult food. All right, so I added the chicken in um, that I had boiled last night, put it in the refrigerator so I could just pull it all off the bone and not get any bones in there. Um, turkey bone, or turkey, chicken and turkey bones are very dangerous. They splinter and can get lodged in your dog's throat or in their, in their digestive tract and actually cut through their intestines. All right, so we've been cooking for a couple hours now. I added in the broccoli, the green beans, um, and then I'm just going to go through and kind of cut through it because it's super, everything's super soft now, um, and get those, get the butternut squash cut up, kind of mushy, um, and I'm now going to put in the oats. I usually, so I bag this up, and I'll, I'll show that too after it cools off. I bag this up. These are just old fashioned oats, 100%. Okay, so I've added in the oats, and I, like I said, I forgot to buy the barley. I don't have any barley for this batch, but that's okay. Um, some wild grain rice. go by any recipe per se, you know, measurements. Um, I just wanted to kind of do a little bit this time just so that I could give you an idea of, you know, exactly. Of course, if you have a small dog, you're not going to make a batch this big. If you do make a batch this big, it's going to last you a long time. Um, you can put couscous, um, flaxseed, um, anything like that in here. Um, like I said, I'm not a professional. I just, I know what my dog likes and I have looked up what is okay for her to eat, what's good for her to eat, what's good for her um, breed. So 
you may want to check into just Google, you know, the breed of dog you have and what is good for dog food, what you can make, what you can put in it. Pans in the oven. Don't turn the oven on because there's pans in there. Get the pans out first. What you think, Penny? Does that look good? It smells good, huh, baby? Yay. She's been digging in the mud. You got muddy nose. You can season it with thyme and rosemary. Um, there are some uh, spices that you can give your dog. I do not put salt or pepper in it. Um, I just don't think that she needs that stuff. And I really don't want to start any kind of seasonings or anything like that if she doesn't need it. You know, it's just something extra that I have to add, that I have to buy. Um, and she seems to like it this way, so. But you can absolutely, but I really just feel like that is something more for humans that humans want in their food, not necessarily dogs want or need. Um, I would just rather keep it kind of bland. I added um, nine duck eggs. All right, I made approximately 17 quart-sized bags out of this, and I also fed them their dinner. Um, these bags have uh, about four cups each in them. Um, you can just split it in half and then give, you know, bag them up and give them half for breakfast, half for dinner. I do add, like I said, a cup or a cup and a half of dry dog food in with these bags when I feed them and some water so it's not so thick. And the dry dog food helps clean their teeth and give them other nutrients that aren't in here. Just make sure you have a high grade dog food that is specifically formulated for your type or breed of dog. Since Penny is a giant breed, her and Sam do get different dry dog food. Um, you can freeze this, I would say safely up to six months. Normally what I do is I keep five in the refrigerator and then when I used one, use one, I take one out of the refrigerator and replace that one in the fridge so that I've always got one thawing and they're used up, you know, evenly and I don't have any sitting in the freezer for a long time getting freezer burn. I will put a recipe for a dessert that I give them down below that is not bad for them like ice cream is, although they love ice cream. You can also freeze this or give it to them, just serve it to them. All right, let's meet the dogs. This is Princess Penelope. She is a 13 month old. 125 pound English Mastiff that um, is evidently just too wore out to even talk to us today. But as you can see, she has got some scarring from hives. Um, she really didn't scratch them. They are almost all gone, but I can still see like little black spots. Oh, I'm sorry, I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, so good. <laughs> and over here we have Sam, also known as Sausage Sam, and Fatty Fatterton. He is, um, we have no idea what he is. He's about oh, 10, 11 years old. He was severely abused. We rescued him at, um, they said he was three years old, but we think that he was closer to five years old. And he has actually been shot. Um, him is a good boy. Him I just go boy. But he goes out in the woods and um, eats what the neighbor dogs have drug up. Beavers, chickens, turkeys, deer, <laughs> squirrels. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what he gets to eat, but he's overweight and I try to control that with his diet and he doesn't get um, very many calories because he is overweight. <laughs> Watch, you're coming down the slide. Here comes Lucas. Here comes Ready? Lucas. Down the slide. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Get the lid off the popcorn and pull some popcorn out. You need that, you goofy kid. 
What do you think you're doing? <laughs> How did you even do that? I took your popcorn away. I took your popcorn away. <laughs> um, Penny, you left something on the couch.